Good afternoon. So some of you may not know, but I like to write and I have a blog, uh, Laura underscore Jesus Freak. Um, it's at blogger.com. I'm not sure the exact website, but if you type in Laura underscore Jesus Freak or go on my Instagram, you can check out um, the blogs that I write. So the Lord has been really reminding me to write more and um, inspire me to write. And so would you keep me in prayer for that? I, I really enjoy it. It's a wonderful outlet. And it's it's totally Holy Spirit inspired, you know. Um, got a lot going on in life, like you all do too. And yet the Lord, he just prompts me, just puts it on my heart. And, um, you know, I just need to find the time to do it. And like last night, I was able to write something that was on my heart. And so just, just keep me in prayer, friends. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, anyway, today, one of the things, the reason why I brought it up is because I wanted to share about um, something that God reminded me of in numbers. And I thought, oh, I want to blog about this, but I haven't had a chance to yet. And so basically, I heard another person share recently that they thought numbers was boring. And... Um, there are definitely parts that are hard to swallow, you know, when you're reading about, you know, the allotments of the land and, you know, the different names of the tribes and this tribe got this person and it was designated to this person. It's just like a lot of reading of names and um, inheritance. But what I was so blessed yesterday about Joshua and Caleb, you know, that the spies went in the land and the spies didn't wholly follow after the Lord, but... Joshua and Caleb, they were different. They had a unique spirit and they followed hard after the Lord. And so I love that. And I was reading and it was just talking about, again, the, the different allotments and the inheritance and, you know, the different um, things that God was impressing people to do, you know, the instructions. And it just hit me. It was so beautiful that the Lord just hit me and he said, I said, Lord, maybe numbers is important because the details matter to you and nothing goes unseen. So here's what I felt the Lord reminding me. Those moms who have multiple kids and they make sandwiches for their lunch, that matters. Those details matter. You know, when you build a house, the foundation and the architecture and the code enforcement permits from the city, that matters. And the plumbing matters. And, you know, uh, what color paint on the outside? What kind of roof are you going to install? Two car garage or one car garage? You know, all of those details of life matter. And so numbers kind of feels like that. It's just a lot of details. But God he cares about those details and it just blessed my heart because I think sometimes we pray small because we think oh this doesn't matter to the Lord he's got so much other things you know to tend to so I was blessed to have some time today with my beautiful Sandy hi Sandy I love you so much and I was sharing with her about um Isaac's worker Miss Casey she's been working with him for months since last fall I'm not sure her first date but anyway it's been going wonderful. She comes three days a week from 10 to 1.30. They get along well. It's a blessing. She is a blessing. She's truly a gift from God. She's leaving the company. And so I started crying. I got the text message from her boss. I started crying. Why? Because this woman is a gift. And she works so well with Isaac. And I just, I was devastated. And so I've been praying about it. And it, and I, I thought, like many of you do, what a silly prayer request. Of course, God's going to provide. God is going to give him the best, you know, new worker. But it's not silly, you guys. Our prayers matter because the details matter to the Lord. Remember when, and I just read this too in Mark's gospel, when it was time for the Passover meal. And Jesus said, go into this place and tell the man that you that that the Lord has need of your upper room and it's already staged and ready to go and say you know the master the Lord 
Rabbi Jesus needs to have the Passover meal here and they're going to get it and they're going to say sure and everything was just as the Lord said and the same with the donkey go into the town and get the donkey you know there's all these details in scripture and I think we get so familiar and we just want the exciting portions of scripture that we sometimes forget these little details are there the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit put them there for a reason and so may we not lose it may we not gloss over these important details that God puts there for us for a reason and so this issue and this prayer request for Isaac as he will be having a new caregiver appointed to our home the details matter may she be anointed of God may she be a believer may she gel well with Isaac may they mesh may they have good you know they call it friend chemistry or caregiver chemistry may Isaac not get aggressive may he got not get confused with this um change changing of the guard from one Monday Tuesday Wednesday worker to somebody new all those things matter to the Lord they matter to me and so of course I'm going to pray for those things and so let's not stop short at praying over details amen amen and father I thank you that your Holy Spirit showed me that your Holy Spirit reminded me that the book of Numbers is in the Bible for a reason and that the details matter, that all of those names and people and allotments and when you count the counting, when you said, you know, and there was 35,000 men over 18 and all of those details matter, Lord. We might not get it in 2021. We read it. We were, huh? We don't get it, Lord. We're just being honest, but it's there for a reason. And help me to remember that, Father. Help my brothers and sisters praying alongside with me to remember that the details matter to you, Father. And that's why you kept them in the scriptures. And even as you chose Holy Spirit to put Jesus wept, that matters and you put all of the miracles in the Bible so that we could see that you're a compassionate God that you're a faithful God that you're a loving God that there was not one person that didn't come to you that you couldn't heal that you're greater than blindness that you're greater than somebody who's deaf or mute that you're greater than seizures that you're greater than um than those that were demon possessed you you're above all you're Lord of the Sabbath and you are a battle fighter and we praise you and we love you and we rejoice because you are God and you are good and you are holy and righteous and no detail in our life is unnoticed, Father. Whether it's crying at night because we're going through a heavy trial or whether it's um, pain and suffering or whether it's feeling misunderstood or whether it's a need, Jehovah Jireh, maybe it's a financial need. You see all and you are Lord over all and you are our all in all, God. And we praise you. We thank you that you are Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Worthy is your name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And Father, even today as Sandy and I were able to share a quick breakfast and prayer time, that man, Fernando, that worker, he matters. I pray for him. I pray for his soul. He came when we were praying. Um, and I just, I pray for him. I pray for all those, um, waitresses and waiters, people, servers in the um, dining industry that have been out of work. I pray for them, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that you would shine your face upon them. Father, so many people have suffered because of COVID and now things are opening up indoor dining, outdoor dining. Um, schools are opening up more and more. Thank you. Thank you, God. It's been a year, a year of blessing. We could look at it as a year of pain and it has been painful, but a year of blessing, a year of watching church online that you did not allow the Wi-Fi to get interrupted. We were able to still watch service online. Praise you for that. A year of being creative as church people and as friends and in the, in together, we, we figured out how to use Zoom. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for the way that you carried us through these 12 months of COVID. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for the blessings that you provide, that the answered prayers, Lord, for the finances, Lord Jesus, for the, the miracles that you've done. Father, yes, people have died and we grieve. I pray for Erica and her family. Comfort them, dear Jesus. I pray for Victoria, for her husband, Tony, who's here still on planet Earth, and uh, Noah, Michaela, and Madison. Comfort them. I pray for all the details of the service next week. Comfort them. I pray for Sherry Tima. Comfort her aching heart, Father, just thinking about how much she must 
just missed her husband. And as Easter's coming up, may that just stir us on to be reminded that those people that we lost in 2020 and in 2021, and even before that, Lord Jesus, if they know you as Savior, we're going to see them again. And what a reunion it will be, Lord. And we are saved. Our debts have been paid to Talestai, paid in full. Thank you, God. You are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You've redeemed us by the precious blood of the Lamb. We're heaven bound. We're so thrilled and excited that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And I pray for my clients. I have some clients that are going through heavy duty trials, Father, and spiritual warfare. Would you armor them up? Help them to take every thought captive. Help them to fight on their knees. Help them to say vengeance is the Lord's. Not to take matters into their own hands, but to trust in you. To trust in the name of the Lord our God. I pray for my friend Magali. Her son broke his ankle. I lift him up to you. I pray for Tim, that you would touch him, that cancer would have no more way over his body, Lord, that you would restore the things that the locusts have eaten and that you would just multiply blessings upon Tim, that he would one day say, thank you, God, for cancer. If it wasn't for cancer, I wouldn't have this second chance of life. I wouldn't be as close to you as I am now. Would you do that for Tim? Would you do that for Christina Wolf, Father? And I just also want to pray against bullies. It's come to my attention that there's some bullies going on, Father. I don't want to say details. You know the details, God. But I, I, I in confidence, I, I pray in confidence. I pray for these bullies. You know who they are, Jesus. They're little girls. And it's not right would you expose them would you expose expose this terrible um behaviors and father i want to pray for georgia and this horrible um spa parlor massage shooting killing whatever you want to call it it's terrible lord those eight people they were were created in the image of god and they they died a horrific death by a sicko by a man that that is demon possessed and so i pray for those families i pray for georgia i pray for our nation that it wouldn't be just another excuse to um have division in our country but that instead people would say oh my gosh what is happening god i need you holy spirit pour out revival every time there's a tragedy may it just cause people to fall on their knees and to look up to you jesus the time is now the time is short we need you lord yahweh sit canoe the lord our righteousness yahweh nisi your banner of loves over us al shaddai god almighty adonai you're our master what do you have us to do you said in jeremiah behold i'm the god of all flesh is there anything too hard for me Help us to know what to do. Help us to hear and heed your still small voice. Your word says, be still and know I am God. And Father, forgive us for so quickly we're run to be like Sarah and create problems with the Hagars in the life in our life instead of being still help us to wait upon the Lord and be of good cheer wait I say on the Lord like it says in the Psalms father we praise you we thank you we rejoice in you and who you are and what you're going to do father and I just want to pray in the name of Jesus against this equality act shut it down close the doors block the doors do not allow any more wicked leaders to be in office in the White House in Sacramento in our country shut it down lord please bring godly leaders father give them boldness even if they're like daniel even if they're the only christian in new york may they run for office even if they're the only christian in california house of representatives or governors or state um uh, local city boards may they run for office God we need godly leaders and we know that you're calling us father for such a time as this we can't sit on our hands we pray and we fast we wait on you but we need to take action show us what action you want us to take father I know that with Isaac you wanted us to get him in school and you swung open those doors for him to go to Portview. Was it a battle? Yes, Father. We had to ask. We did it. It wasn't dropped on our lap. We had to ask the school district. We had to attend special needs meetings, have emergency IEPs, but you opened the door because you're a gracious, loving, kind, benevolent God. So help us to know when to act and when to wait, when to move and when to stop. And just as my sister Sandy prayed today, may your Shekinah glory, that fog, that thick, tangible kabod, that Shekinah glory be over us, Lord. May we be different, peculiar people, Lord, royal priesthood. Help us to be different, to be bold for you, Jesus, but also to not 
be abrasive and rude and arrogant, Father. That is not attractive, Lord. And so too many people are angry. You, you, you did say be angry and do not sin, but we shouldn't be angry and, and rude to people because of our beliefs. We should be loving and kind. And yes, Jesus, you turned over the money changers, but you were the most angry with the religious leaders. You were kind to the prostitutes. You were kind to the sinner. And so help us have wisdom and discernment in that, God, that we don't, um, you know, Father, you know what I'm trying to say that we would not be rude and obnoxious to people that are lost that would turn them away. We want to be kind, loving, bold, courageous, honest, have integrity, ambassadors of the Most High God, Jesus. What a calling. You've called us to be ambassadors for such a time as this in 2021. But forgive us of our sins, God. We have not represented you well as we should. Forgive us, cleanse us, and wash us. And thank you that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And as far as the east is to the west, you forgive us our sins and remember them no more. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for Easter Sunday. Thank you for uh, Good Friday. We pray that many, many people would come back to you, Jesus, whether they attend in person or watch online, that people would watch the Passion of Christ, that people would open up the Bible and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that people would Google, you know, the resurrection tomb and look it up on YouTube. Do something, Father. Move mountains and hearts of people that many, many souls would be saved before you return. We love you. We love you. We just won't stop worshiping you and, and being kingdom-minded until you come and reign on earth and in heaven. And we just love you, Jesus. We worship you and thank you for all that you've done and what you've yet to accomplish, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, amen. God bless Go you guys. Home. Yes, son, we're going home. Say bye. Bye. Worship. Jesus. We worship Church. Jesus, not today, but we worship Jesus Go every home. day. Yeah, we're going home. God Go bless swimming. you guys.